kiddos. You see this? Hmm? She just looks really concerned all the time. So I thought I'd intro it here because backdrop is better than kitchen with cluttered shelf behind it, <laughs> which is where I always start these. So today I'm doing like a, I had this idea of frying up a chicken breast but then putting on like a herb and garlic sauce that do like a boneless, giant boneless wing. And I'm going to do it over some mashed potatoes with the sauce we're going to make. And I'm going to show you guys how to make kale delicious <laughs> not just fucking crunchy green shit <laughs> so we're going to uh we're gonna go do that now and uh yeah let's get started totally not having a beer while doing this <laughs> so I've, I've got the potatoes here the water is already boiling because I figured you guys didn't need to see me fill a pot with water and stick it on, and it's better if it's already boiling. I'm not going to do this whole bag today, mostly because I don't have enough cream to do the whole bag. But, um, yeah, let's just get these things peeled. Well, you know what? I might not even peel them. I might just cut these guys up, because I don't really care if my mashed potatoes have peeled on them. Also, these are, like, they're yellow potatoes. They're basically, like, golden. Yeah, these are basically like Yukon gold potatoes, these little dudes, and um, they're my favorite to make mashed potatoes out. You can do it with Idaho potatoes or any potatoes, really, but these have like a kind of sweetness to them, and I really like these. So we're going to cut these guys up. I'm just going to get them in like big cubes, because we're just going to mash them after boiling anyway, and I'm just doing this first because it takes forever to boil these things, so... And container because I don't remember things. Ooh. So we're gonna go put these guys in the water over there and then we're gonna get started on the cream that you have to make for these. And then, yeah, I don't know if we do the chicken. No, we gotta do kale after that, I think. I don't know. We're just gonna go put these in the water and I'm just gonna wing it as usual, it's fine. Ba -ba. In there. Yeah, yeah, water everywhere. <laughs> There's one more. Come on. No, no, no lone survivors. Everybody boils. That's why I just sound like a super villain. Like everybody boils. We're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna do, do the cream sauce now. Where's my butter? Nope. Yeah, there it is. All right. So I need to get these out of the way. The garlic needs to get a little smashied smashed up and then we're gonna roast these in just some oil for a little bit in a pot which I gotta go I'm gonna go get a pot on right now all right so I got a pot going I'm just gonna heat that up and then I'm gonna get these while I'm smashing these I'm just gonna get it heated up good brain makes sense <laughs> good thing is I don't have to dice these or anything this time I can just go smoosh and take them out of their fucking husk thing all right well that took significantly less time than I thought it would. <laughs> We're gonna have to jump over and roast these now. So this needs some oil. It might be a little bit too much oil. But I'm committed, it's fine. <laughs> and we're gonna throw in our garlic. And we're just gonna get that time to roast. I need to go over and open the butter and cut a chunk off of it, but I'll just let you guys know how much butter I throw in this. So we'll be back when this gets to browning and we can start the process of this. It's time to add in some butter. Let that melt down. And if I can be quick enough, the cream. And a little bit of salt. Not much because we're gonna gauge the salt content when we get to actually like making this. Basically when this gets all incorporated I have to blend this together which I'm just going to use my burr mixer for. And then these I have the mixing thing so I get a 
mash these. You can do them with like a masher by hand, but I just don't really like doing that. I like having like a mixer that I can make them smooth. And then we can add in this and it's, it's a thing. You'll see it. It's cool. Also, while I was waiting for that to brown, I have this like lemon shock top stuff this week and it spilt on the counter because <laughs> the GoPro died and I was trying to do a whole thing and I got flustered. But I think I'm going to, since this is going to be kind of flat and gross now, I think I'm actually going to add it into the uh, chicken sauce we're going to do because it's a lemon beer and I think it might actually make it pretty cool. And it's the whole boneless wing thing with the beer and all that and such. Eh. Alright, this is melted to the point now where we just hit it with the burr mixer. And I need to lean it because otherwise it's going to get all... You know what? Maybe I should show you guys what this shit looks like first. <laughs> Alright, so this is it. Maybe I can blend it on camera too. Let's see. I gave up on trying to show you guys all this blending. I'm just going to finish it. <laughs> Also, that was like two and a half tablespoons of butter because I forget to say things like that in case anybody's actually trying to follow these, which I don't recommend. <laughs> Gotta set this cream aside for when we're ready to uh, get our potato boys mashing. That was hot. I don't know why I thought I could pick that up with my fingers. These are gonna take a while, but the good news is... The good news is, that will take a while, but so will our kale, so we're going to jump over there and start doing the kale side. And chicken will basically be last that we do, and there's a whole breading process and stuff on that. Which I could do while I'm waiting for this stuff to finish up, but let's go over and do kale before this. You know what, I can't even say it's going to get to a point, because it's probably still got like 20 minutes on it. Let's just go do kale. I just gotta get a few little cloves of these garlic uh, minced up real quick so that I can put them on the bottom with the kale. We're gonna do basically like a slow braise on these guys. Probably it takes about 25 minutes. But we're gonna put them in a big pot. We're gonna put chicken stock, a little bit of lemon juice, and maybe... I'm not gonna worry about zesting. Uh, just a little bit of this lemon juice because I'm using the other part of this for the garlic and uh, herb sauce we're gonna make. But we're going to do lemon juice, chicken broth, which is, you know, here. And garlic, and then some salt and pepper, and just let it roast down slowly until this gets tender. Uh, <laughs> we picked through this disastrous mess of garlic. Yeah, this garlic's gross. What the fuck? Why did you sell me this? Look at it. Look at this garlic. Gross. Garlic's done. Next thing is we have to get all this kale. Basically, I need to take these off of these stems. Uh, uh, like, the stems will soften up in there. It's just like, I don't have to be, uh, let me think. <laughs> so the stems won't be like super, uh, super tough if you cook them for a long ass time, but they kind of double up the time it takes to cook. And they're just, they're kind of big and fibrous and I don't really enjoy eating them. So I'm going to strip all this kale off of these stems and then we'll uh... I think we just jump over there and we start cooking these guys up. Oh also as you strip them off you want to kind of like rip them up into tinier shreds. You can also cut them with a knife but I mean this is going to be good enough and if you do it by hand you get a little bit more of a like uh... You get more of like leaves as they cook. If you do it like this you'll just get these like weird strips. And yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna cut a little bit of butter before I go over there, but um, we're gonna go over there. We're gonna stick the kale into the pot that I got going on over there. Good thing about kale, spinach, that kind of stuff, when you put this first in the pot, it's gonna look like it's like over fucking flowing. But it's because this is just greens. When you cook it, it like goes down more than like half of the uh, half the size of what you put in there. So, like when I have when you buy a giant head of kale like I had, you can get probably a serving or two out of it. <laughs> All right, so this is pretty hot because I had already had shit in there. 
Two and a half tablespoons of butter again, just because. Oh my god, that's hot. <laughs> Fan! <coughs> Turns out temperature was up too high. And I left it on here. And yeah, that marks the first time I think I've like actually had something burn immediately on this. Which, you know, just happens occasionally. So, <laughs> if it's a little steamy in here now uh, for the rest of this video, it's not the smudge lens this time. So, let's get butter in this again and hopefully this time it'll melt slowly and not in a giant puff of steam. Cross fingers. Oh, there we go. That's what I wanted. <laughs> Now it's slowly going, yay! By the way, that was me adding the garlic because I forgot to say it beforehand. And that little butter fiasco shows that even if you've been cooking in restaurants and shit for eight years of your career, you could still do stupid shit like that. So, at least I got quicker at fixing it. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna add in the kale now. which again, will look like it's overflowing the pot. Actually, it doesn't look like that on camera. This is what the kale looks like before we cook it. It looks like it's basically the whole pot. We're gonna go ahead and add in the chicken stock now, and then we're gonna put a lid on this and just let it slow cook while we do the chicken and everything else. So let's, uh, let's get chicken stock in this and we'll get to the next part. You like how I'm giving you a cup measurement? I'm not. <laughs> but if, if I had to fathom a guess, that was about two cups. We're gonna do salt. Okay, fuck sea salt. I did a little bit around there, that's probably all the salt I'll need. Um, you'll, it's very easy to overdo salt on these because it looks like so much, and then it's gonna go down and it's all gonna condense, so. While this sits here in slow cooks, we're going to check out our potatoes, which I think Hmm? I think they're good to mash. Yes, they are. So I'm going to cut off the potatoes. Um, we need to get over here and drain them, and then after that we mash them and do the whole thing. So let's get going. Mm -mm. Oh, the stupid thing fell over. In the bowl. Also, this is one of the things, you don't, cold, you don't wash this in cold water after it's done. It's just done. Um, so we're gonna get these mashing. And also, when I was over there, I said drain them like I'm some kind of weird food vampire. I meant strain out the water. I don't know why I said drain. All right, let's get some mixer vision going on. Wait, I don't know if I can do mixer vision. Uh, no, I can't. I need two hands for this. <laughs> I need a cameraman. <laughs> I need my salt. Alright, I'm gonna check these guys out. Oh, perfect where they're at. Holy shit, I got the salt content right. Here's our mashed potatoes. So they look yummy, and I'm probably gonna eat all of them. Although, from what I just saw on the camera, they kinda look like a weird brown mush. So, uh, hopefully I'm wrong. <laughs> they look good to me, I mean, maybe mashed potatoes are hard to film, I don't know, I haven't filmed mashed potatoes before. So we got potatoes done, we got the kale going. Um, so it's chicken time next. Are we just gonna fry those up? Yeah, it's gonna be good. I also forgot to put the lemon juice in the kale, but now thinking about it, I don't really care if the lemon juice is in the kale. I do a little, let's just do it. <laughs> Wait, where's the fig knife? Fig knife! This is literally all the lemon I'm sticking in there. I'm just gonna go squeeze it and put it in because, you know, for one shot of me squeezing some lemon in a kale, I have to unplug this camera and go back over there and set it up, and I'd rather not do that. So I'll be right back with the chicken stuff. <laughs> so I just got these breasts, these little dudes. Um, I might 
I might just cook two of them, and then the other one I can uh, cook for myself later this week or tomorrow or something for lunch. I don't know. It's, it's just going to be an extra chicken. I, I only need, like, probably one, actually. <laughs> I don't know why I'm trying to eat two. I'm so fat. Uh. <laughs> so I pulled the chicken out a little bit early, actually, because we need to set up the breading station. You know what? No, I'm going to butterfly this guy before we do that so, it, like, there's no baking stuff because he's... This is pretty thick, it'll take a long time to cook, but this is a little maneuver called butterflying. Whereas, you just kind of cut it in half, and you make it a little bit thinner, and I kind of fucked up the butterflying, but... <laughs> it's fine, fuck it. We're just gonna fry these guys up. Ah! Two eggles. When you go to a restaurant or something and you get fried food like chicken tenders or something like that, this is usually the process if the place actually makes the batter themselves and does it. It's usually the process that you do. You do flour and then I gotta whisk the eggs together, but you do flour and egg wash and breadcrumbs. Sometimes I will do, which I, I might do this time, is flour, some egg, and go back into the flour and egg one more time and then do the breadcrumbs. Because the flour will stick to the chicken, eggs will stick to the flour, and then the breadcrumbs stick to the eggs. But we're gonna season both of these up first. I'm just gonna do some salt and pepper and maybe a little bit of thyme. And then we'll, cause the sauce is gonna be on it too. So let's just, uh, let's get these guys breading after I get some seasoning. Also, I just went over and cut off the heat to our kale because while doing this, the kale finished. Which took like half the time I said it would. It took like 10 minutes. I don't know why I thought it took 25 minutes. Maybe I just inflate times in my head. <laughs> it's probably the case. We're gonna bread these guys now. I'm gonna set them aside. We're gonna get the kale out. And then we're gonna start frying these babies up and doing the sauce while they, uh, while they fry up. So let's get them breaded. Flour. Egg wash. As I said, I'm. I think I'm gonna do a double. Now, when you do this, um, if you're doing a ton of it, you might want to do like one hand doing this and another hand putting the stuff from the breadcrumbs onto a plate or whatever you're gonna put them on. Because uh, I've had to do goat cheese and other things with breading like this before, and. Uh, <laughs> You get furry mittens on both hands, and then it's just kind of gross. I'm the food teddy bear. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it took me way too long to recover from that one. <laughs> so I'm going to save these guys, because I'm going to fry up the other two chicken breasts anyway, and I can reuse this stuff as long as I use it for nothing but the chicken. I should be all right. So I'm just gonna lid these guys off and get them out of the way and we'll get over there to our kale. I lied, I brought the kale over to to me. <laughs> but this is, what, this is what we got. So here's our finished kale. As you can see, that's the side of the pot that it used to be at the top of, now it's there in here. That is like maybe three servings. It was probably a little bit less than what I said in the beginning. But uh, yeah. All right, so let me try this. And that's how you make kale edible. <laughs> it just softens up the leaves a lot and gives it more flavor with chicken stock and uh, a little bit of lemon and garlic, all that. I just, I love doing kale this way. Oil this bitch up. Mm. All right, I put a good amount of oil in here because we're gonna kind of shallow pan fry these. And since I didn't really butterfly that, evenly I might end up having to bake these I'm just gonna judge it as we go I feel like as long as the oil is not blistering hot um, and the outside gets too brown too quickly it should cook but you know what just to be safe I'm gonna preheat the oven anyway all right we're going a little double time 
while the oil heats up before we put the chicken in there and I have to move the camera over there before they put the chicken in. <laughs> I'm going to dice up some onion, um, a few cloves of garlic, and the main part of the sauce we're going to do lemon juice herb. We're going to do actually a good little bit of garlic because it's a garlic herb sauce. And um, then we're going to put in some of the chicken stock and after all of that's done cooking together and the chicken stock gets reduced down a bit, we will put in some cold butter to thicken it up. I'm also contemplating if I want to do a current starch slurry to help it thicken, but I'm going to judge that as we do the sauce. We might do a current starch slurry, which is like an alternative to doing a roux. It's quicker, but you have to cook more of the current starch flavor out of it. But if we get to that, I'll show you guys that. I'm going to try and thin dice these guys. Onion box. Wait, why did I put that in there? What the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> I meant to save these. Yep. So, while smashing garlic, the oil got hot enough. So we're going to put the chickens in now. That's a good sizzle. Sizzle, my little bitches. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give these a quick dice and uh, we're gonna jump over there, probably flip the chicken real fast and uh, get the sauce going. Alright, let's flip these little babies. They're looking pretty good right now. They got a good browning on them. And um, I feel like I'm probably going to have to finish bake these, which is fine um, because I need to do the sauce anyway. So I think I'm actually going to, is this handle plastic? It's definitely probably going to melt. Um, <laughs> all right, I'm going to get these, at least this big dude, into the oven. The little guy will actually finish on the stove top. All right, sauce time. First thing we're going to do is cook down our onion and garlic. Let those get browned up a bit. So, onion and garlic have been going for a little bit. I'm going to cut off the heat on my chicken pan and just let it sit here with the residuals and finish because I think that guy's pretty much cooked and it's just got to finish up a little bit. But we're going to go ahead now and add in something. <laughs> we're going to add lemon juice first. God damn it. Also, if a lemon's being stubborn, you can always poke it with a fork while you're squeezing. And work it. Work all that juice out of there. Alright, chicken stock time. I have Italian seasoning that's just up in my cupboard, so I'm gonna add a little bit of this, not a lot, because I don't want it to really taste that Italian. Actually, you know what? the thing I might do. Oh, it's about that time. Which, was that another pun by me? It wasn't intentional. Alright, I did have an idea to put Parmesan in this, but I... My Parmesan's not any good anymore. I had to get rid of it, so... <laughs> We're gonna let this cook a little bit. Um, this chicken I'm gonna go ahead and get off of here and just check him out real quick. Let me see. This is gonna be my test dude. And he is done. I'm also going to try a little bit of him. See where my breading's at. It's good. Breading's good. Got salt, all that going on. So when that guy finishes up, I gave him 10 minutes. I might give him a few more because I don't feel like it's going to be done in 10. And um, yeah, so let's just wait for the sauce to get to a point. Actually, the sauce is pretty much at the point I wanted. So what we're doing is similar to what we did with the uh, pasta in the first video where you melt the butter basically with it off the heat and it's slowly going down so that this kind of just melts and keeps its fat. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just stir in like, this is like two and a half tablespoons of butter again. And let this melt down slowly and become part of the sauce. This is cool because I can shift to these, get a little bit more heat if I need it, and come back. I'm waiting for the chicken to finish. Um, and I'm going to keep that sauce a little secret. I'd usually do an aerial shot and be like, here's what the sauce looks like. But it'll be a little 
cherry on top at the end, except the cherry is made of garlic and liquid chicken. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Chicken. Yeah. 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 All right, I think it's about time we set up this plate and then uh, go feed uh, feed my fat face. Yeah, mashed potatoes. Mm. I just realized I said I was gonna put the rest of that flat beer over there in the sauce, and then when I did the sauce, I completely forgot about the flat beer. So that's not gonna happen now. <laughs> All right, so big chicken. Yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit of this tiny guy in here, just for good measure. Eat this piece. And I'm gonna put our kale right here. Mmm, yeah, I gotta have them greens. And now, for our sauce. Alright guys, so here's the finished product of today's little cooking. I'm not gonna call this a lesson video. <laughs> the cooking video. Here we are again with some good food. And you know what? I can't even say it's good food yet. I haven't even fucking tried it. I didn't even try the sauce. I have no idea. Okay, the sauce is pretty good. <laughs> so let's try this. Okay, I get chicken and potatoes to make sure it works together. And a tiny bit of kale. Okay, this is delicious. I'm so glad I did this. I kept wanting boneless wings, like, all week. But I didn't want to go spend the money to just get some fucking boneless wings. So I was like, I really want like, the garlic and herb and parmesan one. Which I was gonna add parmesan when I thought about it. But it was disgusting, so I threw it away. But yeah, this is really good. I'm glad I made this. <laughs> Eat this again real quick. So, this is a good one. I like doing this. It was fun. It was just kind of something I was thinking about doing all week. And I think next week, or actually, you know what I'm going to do next week. That's a fucking surprise. <laughs> I'm going to do biscuits and gravy next week. So we'll go through the process of actually making the biscuits and then making the gravy for it. And then I might even get some egg. I actually have eggs, so I don't have to get egg. But I might cook a like a sunny side up or over easy egg on it so I can share some egg stuff too. I think it'll be good. It'll be a good idea for next week. So, thank you guys for watching. Um, and I will see you guys next Tuesday. So have a good one. Alright, so we're gonna... I don't know if my face is in this bowl or not. <laughs> Let's just do that. God. You want to shut up, fan? <laughs> <coughs> Damn it. Fucking butter. What is this shit? Oh, it's a kale bag. Why did I put it on that side? Ah. I'm so fucking clumsy today. I've dropped like a million things while doing this. <laughs> Fuck every video. Awesome. You know what? No. <laughs> so, uh, I'm so bad. What am I doing? Hmm. All right, let's garlic smash real quick. Well, not garlic smash. Fuck. Fuck. I'm not garlic smashing. All right. So I'm waiting on chicken to finish. If the fan's still on. God damn it.